Welcome back. It is another installment of 15 Minutes with Andy. Our final guests, uh, and I say guests because they're plural, of season number two. We have already started the ball rolling for season three guests and trying to uh, find uh, some other great, and we've had some great people that have been on with me here in season two, uh, following up a terrific season one. And this is no different as well. And we hope that you have discovered it and uh, spread the word a little bit about what our main goal is, and that's to, in a um, in a world sometimes that can feel overwhelmingly negative, we've wanted to uh, try to accentuate the positive as much as we possibly can. And uh, certainly here, uh, uh, a conversation that we're going to have when we get to the uh, end of all of this and through all of this conversation with uh, Dalton and Naomi, we're, you're going to have a great positive uh, to talk about and listen to. But guys, first of all, thanks for being here. Well, thank thanks you. for having us. And I guess i got to thank my classmate, Buffy, for thinking of this idea, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I don't want to give... Uh, Uncle Buffy or Buffy, too much credit. (laughs) So um, where does you guys' story begin? Uh, 2014 in my garage, actually. Both fresh out of relationships. Uh, We weren't really planning on anything happening. It all actually started on a ask a question about a tanning bed on Facebook, actually. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, Who did the asking? I did. Okay. 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 Um, and he had stopped after work or whatever. And for a few months, actually, we kind of just drink, friends, drank drink some beer in, in the garage, garage and, and just talked about things. And one day he just asked me out on a date. And, and from that history. date, it came to, he got married in what year then? 2017. 2017. So... Been together now basically eight almost years, five years. Yep. and then married almost five yeah. years, but yep. been together eight years. Yep. So yep. Uh, knew all along that you wanted to have children of some kind. Yep. Oh, yeah, yeah. absolutely. But and I know the uh, if you're from Montpelier like I am, we know we know the Beck clan. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And absolutely. it's a big family. <laughs> Do you, Naomi, come from a big family? Uh, yeah, you can say that. Most of my family doesn't live around here. Um, a lot of them came from down south. But, yeah, uh, my dad's a slosher from Montpelier, Pioneer area. So Okay. And yep. for those that are listening, what do you guys do job-wise? Um, I work at Techmore here in Bryan. Okay. And I work at Williams County ODOT. At ODOT. Okay. Yep. So you get married and everything's going along. You have plans to have a baby. And what was that like when you found out that you were pregnant, Naomi? Um, Actually, it was a shock because I had, you know, been on the birth control for so long. And we thought it would actually take us a while to get pregnant. But actually, after two mo- only two months of trying, we... We found out we were pregnant. So. I knew she was pregnant first. <laughs> <laughs> she grabs a jar of pickles and just continues to eat the jar of pickles. I go, are you sure you're not pregnant? <laughs> she says, well, I don't think so. And then probably two or three days later, she takes a pregnancy test and yep. she's pregnant. And they yep. say that uh, girls know usually first, but mm-hmm. yep, credit no. to you for that. <laughs> yeah, not in this case. The pickles no. was the giveaway. <laughs> yep. So uh, uh, overall, was it? a good pregnancy uh yeah overall uh the beginning i was just uh, quite nauseous uh, but i never really had any vomiting or anything the ending was a little i had to go off work a a little early 31 weeks um so i was having some some issues but um they weren't life-threatening or anything but my doctor just thought it was best for me to precaution Mm -hmm. yes um so yeah and then we I was off at 31 weeks, and then uh, we had her uh, when I was 39 weeks. Okay, yep, so. and the her that we're talking about, of course, is a uh, beautiful Taya, yeah, and she, her birth date is when? When was she born? 11-9-18. 11-9-18. Okay, so um, things are going well yep. through the first, what, almost two years? Almost, yeah, yeah almost two years, because she was two, two and a couple months. Yep. Okay, yep. so what was the first sign that something isn't going right with Taya? Um, Well, we battled for a month before we found out uh, Taya was complaining of arm pain. Um, She had fell off just a little little baby toddler chair at the babysitter's. It wasn't, but maybe six inches, if if that, off the ground. Um, And she she just kept complaining about it. We thought maybe she, you know, got nursemaid's elbow uh, from, uh, you know, holding onto the chair or whatever when she fell. Um, and after a chiropractor, a few different doctors, um, an urgent care visit even, um, finally the chiropractor was our last resort, and he sent us to a specialist in Toledo. Mm-hmm. 
and they actually confirmed that she had a fractured humerus, um, but it was too late for us to do anything to it because new bone growth had already happened. Um, and then actually that next day after I had her at Toledo is when she kind of resisted wanting to do anything. All she wanted to do was lay on the couch and not move. So Now it's time that, I mean, now you're thinking, I'm sure both of you, this this is beyond what even what we already know. Yep. Yeah. It was a, it's time to get answers. It was a Wednesday that I think she was diagnosed with that. Yep. Thursday. I stayed home with her Thursday, didn't I? Uh, no. Thursday. Oh, it was Friday. Friday, I stayed Friday's home with her, home and with I her took her to, to, the, to ER. the ER in Defiance, and thinking, you know, because she ha- she didn't really have an appetite, she wouldn't hardly walk, she couldn't hardly walk, yeah. um, and took her to the ER in Defiance. Thought maybe she was dehydrated because she wasn't eating or drinking. Um, doctor pushed fluids. She wasn't getting any better. Um, he says, I want to see her back tomorrow. He says, whether you take bring her back here or you take her somewhere else. He says, I am back tomorrow at noon. He says, bring her anytime afternoon. He says, if you want, since he already kind of knew the workup of everything. And she wasn't any better when we took her back, and he knew it. Um, he did some more blood work and couldn't find anything. He said, this is kind of beyond my scope of practice of anything that we can do here. He says, I think this is more a neuro- neurological issue. Because they did a CT scan. Um, just of her and brain. Just, a, just of her brain and, and Brian and couldn't find anything at that point. Um, so we ended up getting transferred to Prometica Children's in Toledo. And uh, we get to Toledo. They do CTs, MRIs. Come to find out she had a tumor on the back, just just above her shoulder blades and to the bottom of her uh, from neck. The, from the base of her neck to yeah, the top of her to shoulder blade. Yeah, to the top of her shoulder blade. And the MRI Six. caught that? Yes. yes. They actually thought she had what's called a Guillain-Barre syndrome, which is um, something that you get from a viral infection. Um, with her not having an appetite or drinking, they thought that maybe she was fighting something that whole week. Um, and Guillain-Barre is kind of like a, a side effect syndrome from that. Um, so they are, they were actually going to spinal tap her, but the MRI, of course, was first, and they didn't have to do anything else because they, of course, had found the mass. So the mass was uh, pinching on her spinal cord, yep. and it literally, if you look at, if you were to look at the MRI, it was literally paper thin. Yeah. So in a in a sense, she was paralyzed from the chest down. She yep. couldn't. She could feel, but she couldn't move. Yep. She could move certain things to a point, but she couldn't bear painful. her own weight, and it was very painful for her. Yeah. And then, I mean, that's painful on her, obviously, physically, and now on you guys, yes. yep. too, for thinking, could we have caught this sooner? And I'm sure a million questions run through oh, your yeah. mind, I can only imagine. So what, what does the doctor say after you get the news that this is, and I can't imagine, that's every parent's nightmare to hear news like that. Mm-hmm. What's the point or what's the plan of action then? Um, so they brought in a peds neurologist that was in the Toledo hospital they had brought him in it was actually it was on a sunday they they crunched around to get a team together on a sunday which they can't normally do uh, but they did with her because her condition was condition was in such rare form um so they brought everybody in and this neurologist came and talked to us when she was back there waking up when they had told us about everything um and he said that he has he had done surgeries on kids her size but never to the extent of what this one was going to be um he would do the surgery for us, but it was not something that we felt that he felt he was comfortable right. with. Right. He, and he even said, I mean, he was a great doctor. He says, I'm not one of those guys that are that is full of myself. He says, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that, yes, I can do the surgery. He says, I can do the surgery, but he says, I'm not very comfortable at it. He says, I just want to be upfront and completely honest with you. He said, I believe your best bet would to go somewhere that they kind of specialize in this kind of thing. And uh, we were... Yeah, that was uh, Sunday at like 5, 6 o'clock yep. by the time everything had happened. Um, and at one point we were having... They weren't going to... Dalton has amazing insurance with the state, and we knew that there was no issue with the medical insurance. Um, but for whatever reason, Michigan law and Ohio law, they have to have pre-authorization from a medical insurance in Michigan if you're crossing border. To transfer. To, to transfer. Because you were going to go to Ann Arbor? Yes. Because we were going to go to Ann Arbor. Um, but 
her condition was she was deteriorating and it was something that was actually kind of serious and at one point um, I went out to the hallway to talk to them this, to find out an update and they had told me that they were seriously considering air airlifting her um, because they could not get a squad up here from anywhere and Nationwide Children's in Columbus is where we had chosen for our second option. So um, it's a quick turn to get her there. I mean, yeah. time is but, kind of of the essence. Yeah, and they, and they, the, yes. the doctor said that this was something that needed to be taken care of ASAP. I mean, within the next 24 Day hours or so. Or less. Or less. Because it was just, you know, it was it, not that it was necessarily growing, but it was just pressing on her spinal cord and causing damage. The, long, I mean, yeah. the, longer, the longer your long, spinal cord goes without blood flow, the longer it takes to either you. bounce back or yeah. maybe not get anything back. And we should probably let people know that it has a name, round cell sarcoma, right? Yep, yes. it is a round cell sarcoma. Um, it's a very rare form of round cell sarcoma. It is a nut. Sick nut M1 mutation. Yes. It's a two gene, so technically Taya, Taya was technically born with the genes and they mutated from there to cause the cancer. Yes. And when she was diagnosed, I don't know if it's changed, but she was the seventh in the world. Yes. yes. And as long and as far as we know, as um, looking things up still, they haven't even recorded hers in there yet. Yeah. I mean, there's rare mm-hmm. forms of cancer, and then there's then there's something like this. Yes. Yeah. Yep. And it and she, did I read this right? She was the youngest one diagnosed, or among one of the youngest. One of, one the, youngest. of the youngest. I think yeah. there was one that was about the same age as her. Um, but it, there again, when you Google that, yeah. you cannot. There's maybe three websites that you can go yeah. to. Yeah. Even even the doctors at Nationwide were kind of stumped on it. There, it, for one, it took us forever to get results back. It took three it, weeks. Three weeks to actually figure out that what the exact cancer it was. It didn't take them long to get the stuff back. That yes, it is cancer, but what cancer we were looking at, they weren't sure yet. And it just because it was so rare, it was giving their test results all kinds of screwy things and they you know they had to rerun it and rerun it and rerun it yeah so it so was surgery day and you were told if i remember right you were told it was going to be multiple hours yes but it didn't go that way right no. yeah it actually um she went back at six o'clock on monday mm-hmm. um, and they told us that we were looking at eight hours plus so we had not showered. I actually had worked that Saturday morning right before we took her. Um, so him and I had not, we had not showered or anything, been able to take care of ourselves. So when we got back to her room in ICU, they have a family bathroom that was down the hall that we used to kind of clean ourselves up with. Um, and I remember looking at him and we were, he was telling me that I needed to sleep because I had not, Taya wouldn't let me sleep. Um, not only that, but as a mom, I just couldn't. Um, but Dalton looked at me, and I we were just both exhausted. And he had told me, you know, that I needed to try and sleep. And I remember at one point trying to close my eyes, and then I vaguely opened them, and her doctor standing at the door, the, the sliding door. And I instantly was sick to my stomach because it hadn't even been an hour and an a half. An hour and a half. I so you were thinking the worst. Yes. yes. Yeah, because it yeah. had not taken as long as you thought. Right. Yeah. So what was what 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 the surgeon tell you? What did you hear as far as success? Not success. I mean, as far as the surgery itself, um, it was successful. Uh, <clears throat> they actually he was he was pretty astounded at how well because they actually use a vacuum to get them out. Um, and hers was it's a soft tissue sarcoma is what her cancer is. Um, so they use a vacuum to suck it out. Um, and he said that it sucked out really fine. But you have nerve roots that come off of your spinal cord. Um, at every single vertebrae of her spine. Um, and hers, actually her T1 uh, nerve root is where she actually still to this day has some residual tumor in there. Um, and that's what they were worried about the most. Is he went in there and kind of scraped around. Um, but that nerve root again controls breathing, arm movement. Um, we're talking a whole lot of things. Um, and if they were to nick anything or, you know, if something were to go wrong under the knife there, you know, that would definitely change her quality of life from there on. So he kind of, he cleaned up what he could to see what, what would happen afterwards. Um, but the rest, the rest of it, that's why he came back so soon is because it was, it came out so well. So well. Mm-hmm. How are you guys doing? And then how is she after surgery? I mean, how is her demeanor and her state? Uh, How's everything? I mean, she's two years two, old. Two days after surgery was rough. Um, she was on pain management pump 
Um, and obviously not understanding what's really right. going on. Yeah, as a, yeah. You know, as a two-year-old, she, you know, she can't hardly communicate with you at that point. So the only thing going through my mind personally was this poor little girl is wondering why we put her through this. Yeah. And that kind of tore me up a little bit. Yeah. But um, she, I mean, she's a trooper. She handled it really well, surprisingly. I mean, more so yeah, She was more on so a pain than, pump for 15 hours, and they, yep. they were kind of surprised because um, she didn't seem like she was achy or anything or she needed morphine or substantial amount of pain medication that they couldn't give besides the Tylenol and stuff. So she, I mean, she did astoundingly well. Thank the good Lord she has her daddy's pain tolerance because <laughs> <laughs> mommy doesn't have one. <laughs> they, they told you probably too right away or maybe you knew before the surgery but if not I'll let you talk about it. certainly after that chemo and radiation were coming. At that point in time, we didn't know if it was benign yet. We were yeah. still waiting results, and I think it was almost over a week before we knew for sure. But she, her condition was so bad as far as not being able to move and the surgery that she had that she had undergone um, that uh, it was kind of one of those things that, well, we're going to keep you in the hospital for a while um, just to kind of get her to recover, keep things up. Um, and... So at that point, we didn't know if it was benign or not um, or malignant. And then about a week later, it came back malignant. So obviously at that point, yes, we kind of assumed chemo, radiation, and all, and all that stuff. Um, and yeah, then, the course of action was the biggest issue because um, they couldn't, they had to know what kind or what family group the cancer was in, unfortunately, to start her on a chemo plan and regimen um, and she actually is she was actually treated as somebody with um, uh, Ewing sarcoma because mm. uh, Ewing's and her tumor were very similar um, in characteristics so her doctor actually it, I mean there again it's a guessing game because she's nobody else is living that had this everybody else has died so we have nothing not a lot of data to go by as far as what treatment's going to work or, you know, there's not a set plan. So it's kind of like fishing in the dark, as you could say. Yeah. And I can't imagine. I, I really, I mean, I'm I'm a dad. I can't imagine what you guys were going through in your whole and then the extended family going through, especially, I mean, truly a journey into darkness mm -hmm. yeah. with this. And, and the worst part of it was it was right smack dab in the middle of COVID. Yeah. So you couldn't have any family support in the hospital with you. It was strictly just parents, and that was it. Yeah, and that so, was terrible. And being in Columbus and family being back up here in, in Montpelier, and it's just like, you know, you had... You felt you like know, you're on an island, exactly. probably. Yeah. Yep. The, the blessing of it was I've got a cousin, Jarrett, that lives down by Columbus, and him and his girlfriend, Brianna, would come and, hey, you know, you want... Raisin canes. We'll bring you raisin canes. You want whatever. And that was kind of nice because we could take turns going out and just kind of talking to somebody that was familiar and just kind of, you know, stress relief a little bit. Hmm. Yeah, there there comes a point. I mean, we had each other, um, and we did fairly well um, kind of consoling each other. But as far as, you know, you still always need need that somebody else, you know, that unfamiliar person to empty your stomach as you could say um and that's with everything that was going on that's what Dalton and I needed so much because we were sitting in a hospital all day with a child that couldn't walk you know do the things that a normal that she was just doing mm -hmm. um so that's that's where the COVID thing kind of kind of stunk because we we didn't have that so we literally just we could only rely on each other mm -hmm. How did she do once she got into, we're going to, I guess, jump uh, into the summertime. That was when she was doing, was it chemo first or radiation yes, chemo. chemo? And they weren't together. It was one and then the next, right? Well, okay. when, when it was time for radiation, she did do both. Okay. How did, how did all of that go for all of you then? Uh, chemo wasn't, wasn't terrible. She had a few bumps um, in the road, but kids their age um your brain their brain receptors don't work the same as an adult does you don't get yourself worked up like oh i'm getting chemo i'm gonna it's gonna make me sick um she never did vomit from it um it just made her very tired um they gave her steroids which she did get roid rage with that pretty bad um i've she's actually given me pretty much a black eye one time in the hospital <laughs> mm -hmm. 
um, because it, does, it made her very mean. Um, but chemo and radiation was the hardest. It was the hardest seven weeks that we had to go through for sure. Because that radiation was strictly on that spot at the back of her neck, which in turn, it was a um, proton radiation, which specifies in one specific area versus like a regular radiation, you could say goes like through general your body area. or gener general area. But it still was enough to kind of burn her esophagus so she wouldn't eat at, at I think, what was that, week five? probably oh it was sooner than that was it? yeah but, we were about halfway through yeah. and we ended up with an ng tube ng tube and, and that was a pain in the butt and she wouldn't swallow so she's constantly just because it hurt her so bad it literally burned the inside of her esophagus yeah. so but again she was a trooper and she made the whole thing easy on us because she took everything so well. Isn't it amazing how yep. kids have yep. that? Have that You hear that. That's what you hear all the time. Yep. You hear it in cliched things, but in this yep. case, it's so, so yep. true. Yep. So through all of this, I think you guys probably discovered, I mean, you knew you had great families and family support. And when you were, those were, when the family was, you were able to be around them, you were getting that. Mm -hmm. yes. But I think you also probably found out pretty quickly what Northwest Ohio is like. Absolutely. And I can't just say community because it starts in Montpelier, Eden, right. but it goes way out and beyond that. Oh. I guess talk about how the whole fundraising began and what you guys discovered through all of this in a lot um, of this. It actually started with his cousin Mallory. She had the, she had the idea to, everybody goes to car shows. Why don't we uh, tell people to shine up whatever wheels they got and bring it out, you and know? Do a car show. Yep. And, and even at that, you know, we... And, of course, that was a big thing to do. But before that, just community outreach, um, people that we didn't know that had heard about it, you know, from my grandma and grandpa, you know, prayer lists at church, and then people from those churches, and those people talked to their friends outside of the community. I mean, we we had people in Michigan, Indiana, that we didn't know. Checks in the mail Checks that in we the don't mail even that, know who the people are. I don't are. know this person, and, you know, and, and it was just a huge community outreach and outpouring of money food anything you can think of and it was literally overwhelming to the point where it would bring you to tears it's like i don't know this person and they're willing to help us yeah and and give us the money and we're not the kind of people that like to take handouts you know i i work for my money i try and you know yeah. bust and she does too we try to bust our butt for what we have and, and it was hard for us to take these people's money and and their generosities and of course my family are like this is what people want to do yeah finally his mom his fi finally his mom said you have to people want to bless you and your family you have to let them do that yep, you it have comes to let from them be God. blessings and it, and, so. it, and it truly was and and once you kind of learn to accept that it, it really even humbles you even more like you know and uh so then yeah the whole car show came about like you know we could potentially have some good money because chemo bills radiation bills mm -hmm. um of course my cousin remington has been through all of it and his dad bobby bobby beck and we know all too well you know expenses of the yeah. whole cancer treatment thing and it can get overwhelming so you know any little thing that we could think of to help us out alleviate those expenses and this car show came about and uh we put it together and it was a huge huge success uh, we had people from, again, Michigan, Indiana. Um, we people, have one travel from Washington State. Washington State. A guy heard about it from Washington State from, I believe, family here. Uh, yeah, Bill Goddard. Yep, Bill his Goddard. Brother. Yep, his brother came all the way from Washington State. And, with his car. Yep, with his car, and and it was just a huge thing. Um, and now we can say that Taya is doing very well. I'm glad you, um, that, that was leading into my <laughs> next question is where are we at as we sit here now, here in the middle of June, essentially, yep. where is she at? A little, little over a year from the time everything happened. And yep. she, um, uh, like we talked before we started this, uh, she, I mean, she's, she's doing phenomenally well. You would never guess until you've seen that huge scar on the back of her neck. Um, She's so smart for her age, and she's overcome a lot. And she's she's not out of the woods, but scans have all been stable. Um, we haven't really had a bad scan, but we haven't really had a one that a, we want. A great but, scan. Yeah. Um, in turn, we don't we don't know what the future is going to be, but we have 
we have a lot of faith that God's going to keep her with us for a very long time. Do you do you have what is it? Six months? Three months? Every, is the scans it goes yeah. every three months? I yeah. figured probably three. Yep. She she was on um, every six to eight um, uh, for the first couple times because we ended chemo at the end of January. So um, she had a spot on her lung that we have actually been watching for. Eight since months. the beginning of it, yeah. since the beginning of all of it, when they did yep. more, they did chest CTs and all that, and there was just a little spot on her left lung, and they weren't concerned o- about it. Um, and actually, this last scan shows that it's it shrinking. Finally, has changed in and size. He doesn't. Yeah. He still doesn't believe that it was any cancerous thing. They thought about doing a biopsy on it, and they're like, "It's just too small of a thing to even go do." They weren't too concerned about it. Yeah, um, Dalton and I actually, we kind of, that's why they started to do the scans every six to eight weeks because we didn't want to, that would be another major surgery that she would have to go through, a chest tube, all that. Um, so if we wanted to watch the scans and see how they did, and with her being off chemo, they said if it was going to grow, it would grow pretty soon quickly, after the yes. chemo had stopped. Um, but the reason they didn't know is because she had, since they found it, she was on chemo the whole time. So, I mean, that could keep the cancer, if it was, at bay. Um, but, yeah, our last in May. In yep. May, it was it had shrunk a little bit in size. Cautiously so. optimistic. Yes. And, and that's yep. exactly the words the doctor used. Yep. He says, I am cautiously optimistic. <laughs> Especially with n- basically no data to go on. Exactly, yep. And, he, and he's, you know, the last scan, she was also bad on kind of a cold <laughs> cough thing. Mm-hmm. And... Her right lung, which has always been clear in the scans, kind of showed some stuff. And he come in and he says, has she been battling anything? We thought it was just allergies, actually, right. at the time. but And we're like, well, kind of, you could say that. And he says, well, he says, this shows a little bit of thing in that right lung. But, again, I'm cautiously optimistic. I don't feel concerned about it at all. So we'll come back in July, July. Yeah. and do another scan. And if everything's good in July, we can take her pour out of her where her, well, it's just above her left clavicle collarbone um we can take that port out and hopefully just every three months every three months from there for probably a year or so and yep. so on and so forth but she's walking talking Little she didn't brat. get to have the terrible twos <laughs> so now she's having the terrible threes yep. and you know i was just i was going into this i was like people are listening to this and when they discover this we're talking to mom and dad, but they want to know about the little rock star. Uh-huh. So what? How do? You, how does mom and dad describe her personality? What? Who is she, Taya? Is her she, mother's she, daughter? Yes, <laughs> no. she is. She's an outrageously crazy little girl. We'll yep. say that. She's wild. She's fearless. She's. Yep. Uh, she's. She's literally going to be the kid that's always in a cast. Always something. at the hospital, something because yeah. it's there's no slowing her down. I never heard you say the word introverted, so that's definitely not on the table. No. No. She's not introverted. No, no, no. she is not. <laughs> she I, maybe at first if she doesn't know no. you, she doesn't know you, but it doesn't take faces, well, yeah, it doesn't take long to warm up to somebody, and she's their best friend. I mean, and she's going to be wild and crazy, and she deserves it. Yeah, so. she really does. We've said that we started this podcast because of positivity. We wanted more of that. And another word I've kept come going back to and over and over again is sometimes the world doesn't feel like we have a ton of hope. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You guys sound very hopeful and very Absolutely. optimistic and very confident and Strong in your faith. Yes, yeah. absolutely. A year ago, we... it was, we And you've had moments. Yep. Everybody oh, absolutely. Does. Everybody has them. But I think the, the family foundation part of it, I mean, yeah. just a family full of faith. And you always think of the positive. I mean, yeah, you've got the negative, but you always have to look at that bright side. Uh, my mom puts it in a good way. Tay is the seventh case. She's going to overcome this, and she's going to help eight, nine, ten, and yeah. so on and so forth, yeah. and learn yeah. from it. So that's a great way to look at it. So uh, another message and theme we want to get out, and I know another re- reason you wanted to talk on the podcast is to let people know that how appreciative you guys were, not just with the last year's car show, but in all the outpouring, but specifically with the car show, and now an opportunity to pay it forward. Yes. Tell us a little bit about that. We want to do a, another car show. Basically, we kind of want to make this a yearly thing, an annual thing. Um, and we want to, whatever proceeds we make off this car show through registration, vendors, or whatever, we want to find a family in the community. Um, 
a child in the community or what have you that is struggling with similar situations that we did, you know, financial problems, you know, especially the way gas prices are now and, and the way prices are going up that any little bit helps. Yeah. Um, and we want to let people know that we're doing this car show and everything is going to another family in the community, Williams County area, surrounding area. Um, the money is going back to them 100%. Yeah. Um, and it's it's a tough pick because there's, all, I mean, you don't know it until it happens to you how many people out there are going through similar situations. And it is a, you know. It's going to be very hard. It's going to be very hard to pick. But we hope that, you know, we can do this every year and continue to help people in the community this way. Um, it's kind of hard to find a, it's kind of hard to find a way to figure out how to give back to so many people, to even people that we don't even know. Um, and we we just got to talking to the family and we're like, why don't we do a Team Tay Gives Back? You know, pay, pay it forward. Pay it forward, just kind of a... Yep. And she's going to love being a part of that. Oh, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She yeah. loves trucks, cars, yep. tractors, everything. So. Yep. so it's coming up very, very soon, July the 10th, 2 to 5, and it is going to happen at the Williams County Fairgrounds in Montpelier, right? Yep. Correct. So... The shine and show anything that shines bring it out if Literally it has a anything. wheel bring it there you go it could yep. be a unicycle and yep. bring it on out so and there's going to be food and there's going to be music what there's else be yep. a dj, DJ. Yep. okay um food poker uh, run poker run yes. yep the poker run will start at a, at a separate thing but end at the fairgrounds the poker run will start at the nozzleman's uh, motorcycle club on charlie's way in montpelier uh just down from the little league ball diamonds um, and then that will go, we've got a couple st stops that we will do, and then they will end at the fairgrounds to kind of hopefully just draw more people and, and more attractions. We'll have 50-50 yep. drawings. Um, we're some other surprise raffles. Some other surprise raffles. Happen. So, okay. If anybody listening wants to donate anything, wants to uh, be a part of it, wants to find out any and all information, what's the best way to do it? Uh, reach out to Dalton or I. Um, if you see a flyer out around the county, uh, both of our numbers are on there. We both have Facebook also. Um, if you know of any family, uh, reach out to them and say, you know, hey, I have some questions or I'd like to help. Um, and there's a Team Taya Facebook team page. Yep, yeah, yep, there is a Team Taya Facebook page as well. Um, any updates? Were, I mean, we do have an inclement weather date for the following Sunday um, if that was to be a complete rain out. So, um, just keep an eye on Team Taya, and we'll have updates on there as far as that goes, if we have to yep. move it, of course. We're hoping not to. Last year it was beautiful. It was hot, but it was a beautiful day, so we're hoping God gives us another one. Yep. I think uh, I think I feel good about that. I feel good about a great, especially for a great cause like this, Absolutely. and 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 I know it's a tough decision. And, and you know what? There's no right answer, wrong answer. Exactly. Who you pick for for this? Somebody's going to get help and yep. assistance. Yep. And, and we've we've done some gun raffles. Um, <clears throat> that kind of actually started it. Um, was doing some. We've done some gun raffles to help some some other local kids around here. Yep. So um, any anything that we've done after Taya after Taya's event last year has been for other families yep. so we just it, it's we don't know of really any other way to show our gratitude our thank yous I mean there's other than there are, there are so many people that have helped us it, it's hard to keep track and send them thank you letters or you know thank you cards so this is our best way to show our appreciation to the community and try and give back you know it, it truly is a pay it forward thing yeah so, okay. Well, we appreciate you taking time and visiting and yeah. getting your story out there because yep. I think that that is important as well. And I know it's not easy to, to talk about. And it's, it's still relatively fresh. Mm -hmm. It's yep. well within the last yeah. year that everything has happened. So thanks for volunteering yeah. to do this well, and, thanks, and, thanks and, and and searching us out uh, to use this as kind of a platform to talk about it. And like right. I said earlier, it's, I, the beauty of... And I guess probably everybody says this wherever they live, but Northwest Ohio, we have our warts and we have our issues and problems here. Oh, There's yeah. no question about it. But on things like this, you felt and saw it firsthand oh, on how communities absolutely. and people come together. And, and yeah. we encourage, you know, not everybody or every family is blessed to have a family like we have yeah. to come together. And we encourage anybody, if you could be 
Joe Schmo, and if you're going through an issue like this, reach out to us, and yep. we will gladly talk to you because we've been there. If if we we've can made, help, we will. We've made hard. Yep. Excuse me. We've made hard decisions, and we've been there. We know how it goes. We know how it feels. So if anybody that's listening is going through a similar situation but doesn't have that family or community outreach, we're here to listen. We're here to talk. We're here to help. Yep. We all agree cancer sucks. Yep. But we can, we we can find a lot of good through all of that Absolutely. stuff that sucks yep. Yep. in cancer diagnoses. I wish this was a podcast that we never had to do. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, and yep. I don't mean, and you know exactly no, what exactly. I'm saying. Absolutely. Okay. So the last bit here, you've probably been thinking about what questions is he going <laughs> to ask me? You can both answer them. You can, one of you answer them, or you could say, this would be what Taya would say. How about that? Okay. That gives okay. you an out on three. <laughs> a word that you, one of you or all of you love. Like, you love to hear that word. It's just a great word. I love hearing mommy and daddy. Yeah. Just coming out of Taya's mouth. Daddy I love you, mommy. mommy. Yep. I love you, daddy. I think we could pick the next word, that we the word that we hate. Cancer. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that's, that's a pretty easy yeah. one in absolutely. this one. Sound, and maybe this is something now is mom and dad. Sound or noise that you love? Belly giggles. Be- yes, belly giggles from Taya. Yep. yep. <laughs> and those are her throughout the house, I can yeah. imagine. Oh, that. yeah. <laughs> You're four rooms away. She's a loud individual. Yeah. <laughs> uh, sound or noise that you hated or have grown to hate? Beeping. Yeah. Beeping. And, <laughs> just, yep. and, and, and they were always all bad. It was just, you know, chemo was done and nurses were busy, so they couldn't come in. So your machines beeping. Machines beeping because their chemo yep. was done. And I, I that just kind of... Yeah, kind of strike. Not really strikes a nerve, but just kind of irritates you a little bit. Yep. Okay, it's a long ways off. I'm going to tweak this question a little bit. This was always about a career or a profession, but what could you foresee her doing? I know she's only three. A nurse. A nurse. She tells but, us sometimes she wants yep, to be a but nurse. But this kid, I'm telling you, is smart beyond her age. Yeah. And I hope that she goes to someday be a senator or be a president or yeah. I, the... She could run a country. The she world really is could. her limit because I truly believe this kid's done done and gone through everything, and she is literally smart beyond her age. I can see her doing big things. Yep. The world is for her to just go and grab. Exactly. Yep. Um, what do you want people to take away from this? This is my last question. What do you want people that are listening to this podcast to kind of take away from your journey, your story, the idea now of, of giving? What do you want people to know and, and maybe the learn from listening to this podcast don't give up exactly don't give never. up. never even when you you think you're in the darkest of times don't give up because just like this taya couldn't walk she couldn't hardly move um and now she was in the frailest state that you would ever want to see a child right. and there was times where we you know you, you didn't know you yep. didn't know if if alarms would start beeping and she would be gone right so it's, don't yeah don't give up always try and think positive yep. um and you know community outreach is there use it i mean you know we're here like yep. i said facebook dalton beck naomi beck and team taya and team yep. taya yep. and uh you know don't give up and come out to the shine and show and support another family in the community yep july 10th 2 to 5 we're going to have great weather and it's happened at the williams county fairgrounds in montpelier guys thanks again Thank you, Thank Andy. Thank you. Loved having you here, and this was a perfect podcast. You were the perfect guest to end season number two, and I hope we get... Come on now, this Beck family is huge, <laughs> so you got to spread the word now, Absolutely. everybody yeah. to listen in on this now yeah, and, and pass it along, but thanks so much. Thanks to everybody tuning in for uh, this one and the previous seven as well. We've had a ball with season two. We'll let you know when we're back with season three. Be good to each other, be kind, and be positive as well. Take that out into the world as you go, and, and uh, thanks for tuning in to this season of 15 Minutes with Andy.